As well as running this YouTube channel, I play in a blues rock band and we cover Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, Eric Clapton and Cream, The Kinks, all this sort of Britishy, 60s y stuff. And this is my pedal board. And it's far too big and I'm not utilizing all the space. And I have, unbelievably, too many pedals. So I've come to the sad realization that I need or should just compact everything down. There is no need for me to have such a big pedal board and so many options. This is the board that I've been using for the past year. I started off with the Marshall Blues Breaker from the 90s, which even though it sounds phenomenal, it is super heavy and super loud before you get it into that real sweet spot. So that was a no-no. I then switched to the Marshall SV20, thinking that that would give me the Marshall Bluesbreaker tone uh, with a smaller package, but it's it just didn't cut. It was a 10-inch speaker, and it seemed to be too high and shrill and too nah, 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 nah. Then I went, of course, with the Boss Katana, and that was great, but it was just missing a little bit of something. And I don't know what that something is, but it was missing it. And then I finally ended up with this, the EL34, from Blackstar, the St. James, such a light amp um, and, and cab combo. Well, not a combo, but combination. So in this video, I'm gonna rip this board apart and put together a smaller board that does the same job. Yeah, so even though I, I test pedals and guitars and amps and things for a living, I seem to have found my perfect board, which should be a moment of joy, but it's actually quite a sad moment because I don't get to you know, switch pedals in and out, but I, I will. I will leave a space for testing stuff. This board is the Classic 2 from Pedal Train, and it's just too big. And also, when I carry my, my backpack, Pedal Train backpack with this in it, it's heavier than that head and that cab combined, or at least it feels that way. So, uh, let's go through the pedals, I guess. What do I use and what do I use it for? Okay, this is the main brain of the board. This is the L6 Mark II pedal controller from Moore. Uh, this has all the pedals going into it and everything has its own button and then I can program patches a bit like a multi-effects using analog pedals But well, not all analog pedals um, But uh, yeah, this has been modified by Gaffer taping a hairspray cap or a hair mousse cap over the mute button because not only do I play rhythm guitar in this band I also sing so when I play I'm not really looking at the board and I do tend to stomp this without looking and I was constantly pressing the mute switch that's under there which is a pain in the neck another problem I've discovered is that if I press these two at the same time it goes into tuner mode so in fact that's covering if I just lift that up a bit you can see it says tuner so one time at a gig, I did accidentally did that and it's all stopped and I thought I'd muted it. I thought somehow I pressed that mute button, but I don't need that tuner button. So the sensible thing would be to, to put the, the patches down on here. But if you press those, you get a different bank. So it's, this is not the ideal pedal controller for me. So I will be taking this off in this video. At the top left, we've got the Flint from Strymon, which I only ever use the reverb for. I use the reverb from the St. James amp as a standard reverb, and then when I want a bit more reverb, a bit more ambience for songs like Wind Cries Mary, I kick that in and um, it gives me a bit of a bigger sound. This is the, the Delay Lama Mark III from Jam Pedals. I have that set pretty slowly, uh, pretty quickly, sorry. Um, and that's just giving me a little bit of more meat when I have a solo, because I do get to do a couple of solos. This is the main pedal from the board. This is my always on J Rocket 45 caliber. This is a Marshall Plexi Malcolm Young style sound. And I dig it so much. This going through the clean channel of the Black Star St. James is my key tone. Uh, then we've got the Moxie from Wampler, which has replaced my Ibanez TS-10. In fact, I sold the TS-10 for quite an embarrassing profit and put this on the board because it does sound almost exactly the same. It just doesn't have the cool factor. But it turns out people that come to my gigs don't care what's on my pedal board, which is very upsetting. Then a bit of a surprise, a bit of a what is that? This is the Woman Tone pedal from Aclam Guitars. This is basically Eric Clapton's cream tone in a box, and it is thick and it is wonderful. So uh, we'll go over that in a bit. Then we've got the standard GCB95, is it, from, from uh, Dunlop, the wah pedal. Uh, I've never had a pedal board without a wah on it. I am a wah addict. 
And then this is the Shure GLX16, uh, the original wireless unit that is also a tuner. So even though this is huge and massive and I have a tuner in there, this is my guitar signal plus tuning. So it does the job of, of two pedals, even though that also does it. Yeah, so that is the old version. There's now an updated GLX16 Plus which has dual band and more features and is more reliable apparently, but I've never had any issues with this. I would however like to try the new one at some point just to see uh, what happens. Also important, I guess, is the guitar itself, which is this, the Fender AVRI 2 Hot Rod, uh, 60s Hot Rod. This is one of the older recreation of the 60s strats. So it's got a lovely oval C neck, nice and big and fat for my big shovely hands. And it is in desperate need of a string change. So I'll be doing that before a gig this weekend. Um, I'll give you some before tones before I take this out and explain what this looper's doing. So everything's plugged in, wireless unit into pedal board, pedal board into amp. You're hearing it through the cab rig. So that's the simulated Blackstar XLR out thing. I would normally play through the Captor X from Two Notes, but this one's got a built-in XLR with um, IRs in it or some kind of IRs. I actually don't know what, what they are. I need to look back into them. I haven't done cab sim uh, from Blackstar in a while, but the point is it sounds good. So does it really matter how it's doing it? Possibly. I'm gonna be using four and six. So we only have wah, which I won't be using in this bit, and the 45 caliber. Uh, but I'll turn it off as well so you can hear the amp. So that's the 45 caliber, which is super clean. Uh, come on. And warmer and rounder and more martially. It's a fantastic pedal. And then I kick in the woman tone for the solos. great it's just it's kind of fuzzy but it's that overdriven amp sound so yeah that's my solos that's the basic sounds i've used and you might have noticed that i didn't use the delay llama at all i didn't use the flint so i'm not sure whether these two are going to be staying i'm really going to try and simplify this board i probably am going to keep the moxie for some more different tones i don't know yet and it's so small so why not but i am going to be adding another fuzz pedal because you might be surprised to learn that there isn't a real fuzz pedal. I mean, the woman tone is kind of fuzzy, but I don't have a fuzz and I'm in a 60s kind of band. So I need a fuzz. I wonder what it'll be. Now, because I've done a few videos for Pedal Train, I have a few Pedal Train boards. And I've been thinking about going for this one, which is the classic junior. And I think that might also be too big, but let's place the pedals on the board and see if they fit nicely. So I definitely want to keep the woman tone. That's definitely staying. Um, the 45 is of course staying. Maybe the flint, I'm not sure. And I actually have a new pedal. This is the Crybaby CBM535AR. It's the mini one. So if I compare that to the standard one, crikey, that's heavy. Um, that is a lot smaller for my massive feet, but also the main thing is it self returns. So this means I can pay even less attention to pressing the buttons on my board and I can just engage the wire like that. And it should disengage when I, when I stop wiring. So that's gonna go just there. So remember my aim here is to get the smallest pedal board possible because 
we don't want to be carrying too much gear around. Now, I have some other boards in here that might be the right size should I need it. In here is also a pedal that's going to be added to the board. It's the ripped speaker from Electro Harmonics because we're doing some kinks stuff like you really got me and I want to try and nail that intro tone because at the moment I'm using uh, the OnePlus Moxie and it just to my ears just doesn't sound like a ripped speaker because it isn't. So hopefully this is going to do the job. Actually while I'm here I've also got the Metro 16 and the Metro 20 and it would be great if I could fit them on the Metro 20 actually. Let's let's try that. Right. Rip speaker. That needs to go at the front. That needs to go at the front. That can go at the back because it's always on. So we've got that. I'm not really using the flint. So I could get down to that. <gasps> Problem with this though is that there's no space underneath for a power supply. Oh, that's a real pain. I don't have a power supply small enough to fit under that board. So I would have to put the power supply on top. Ah. Yeah, I didn't think that through and the, the wireless unit needs to go on there also. So that's already looking pretty stacked. And I was thinking of putting on uh, the Walrus Audio Mira compressor because using the Strat in those cleany, clean, clean bits, I do tend to lose a little bit of signal. So maybe the mirror compressor is a good idea. So there, worst pedal placement ever. Um, let's, let's have a look at this placement, right. I, I think I'm gonna have to go with the, the junior. There we go, right. So tuner and everything. Can that go at the top? Is my foot gonna accidentally turn that off? Possibly. Then we've got ripped speaker, which is gonna be on yeah, I don't need to touch that. Once it's on, it's on. So that again can go at the top. Compressor can go at the top. And maybe that and that. That's looking pretty good. That feels sensible. So we've got wire down the bottom, solo, solo boost. Um, one song or a couple of kink songs, just that one, keeping this on. So for pedal placement, I want to go in an order. So that would have to go there. That has to go at the end. So here, here. Do we compress before wire or after wire? I'm gonna go compressor after wire. So that's gonna go there, there, there. That at the end. And then, so here, 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 here. This is really confusing. I thought this would be easier. Um, um, right, one more time. Radio unit, radio unit, wireless unit into wah, great. Then compressor, and then the rest of the order doesn't matter so much as long as the 45 caliber is at the end. And I'm not even sure that I need this. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think the board is still a bit too big, but I need that space underneath for the power supply. So, yeah. All right, tuner at the top is also mute. Uh, I'm going to try that. A little tip if you're putting pedals on a board, don't just put them on, but give them a little a little wiggle as well. That lets the, the hook loop love or Velcro really dig in there. So I definitely want that there. That's going there. I also want to be lazy and not cut these cables again. These are the Daddario patch cables, the ones that are uh, solderless. So hopefully this will all reach. I should be able to find something that fits, right? Because I'm bound to change this in a week anyway. <laughs> you know, once I've left it for a year, so now I'm going to be changing it as soon as possible. Just had a thought. Because of the nature of what I do with this channel, I probably should leave a little bit of space here for another pedal should I want to test it at, um, at rehearsal. But then I figured the, the one pedal I would probably take out of this whole rig is this one, because the Moxie, as great as it is, is the least um, the least necessary pedal on this board, to be fair, maybe aside from maybe the compressor. So this Moxie is going to be my temporary pedal that can get switched out, because here should be space enough for most sized pedals. That makes absolute sense. I'm pleased about that. Right. That means I don't have to worry about 
taking a spare power cable and power jack um, patch cable, I can just go for it with this. Right, that is, that's the layout of the board, albeit a bit untidy and um, ruthless. Right, so now we need the power supply. I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to have to take the original uh, universal holder off the bottom of the old board to put on the new board. I don't know if these screws will actually go through into the metal of the new board. Don't you love it when a, a job that you think is going to be fun and interesting and short becomes an actual pain in the neck? So that should fit. I mean, it doesn't matter. It can go on the side. That just feels a bit weird. Uh, what about on this side? Yes. So that should get out of the way. That should go there. Yeah, then I've got a bit of space just here to get cables through. It's finished, everything's plugged in, tidied to the best of my ability right now. Um, some of it's powering up at least, so that's not powering on. There we go, and then we've got a wire, I have no idea if that comes on. Yes, 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 yes. I'm not sure if I need the compressor on there because this 45 caliber is always on, it's kind of compressing already. Uh, Uh, I kind of like it with it on. Right, let's go, let's go this one. What a great fun pedal. Maybe it negates the use of the 45 caliber.
happy so far? Now, this is the one I've been dying to try. Um, the ripped speaker. Haven't tried it for ages. Oh, a bit thick. That's pretty close, it's a super dark pedal though. We're there, although I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the final iteration of my pedal board. So, at the beginning of this little project, I was saddened by the fact that I'd reached a sound that I really enjoyed, and now I've found a sound that gets me most of the way there, but doesn't quite get me where I wanted to be. I was expecting more from the ripped speaker, if I'm honest. It's a bit too hardcore. It's pretty heavy, pretty fuzzy, and even with the fuzz like down there, it's still big and thick. Yeah, so it's still behaving like a big fuzz, and I wanted a kind of nasty fuzz. Maybe there's another fuzz that I could put in its place. I will experiment again in another video, but um, I'll bring you more stuff from the band, because I know that you guys find that interesting when I play in the band, and we, we talk about band things, because making music is what this stuff is for, right? Okay, subscribe if you want to, and leave comments and all that sort of stuff, and thumbs up and smashing bell. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.